Tukowski for his first meeting here with us. Ray, what we've done um, when we've had some new people recently is just quick go around and introduce ourselves so that people feel like, you know, you know who you are and you can say whatever you'd like to um, in terms of the CPA, if people want to say how long they've been on here or what their special interests are. Um, Risa, why don't you start? Okay, so my name's Risa Smith Freed, and uh, I represent housing, and uh, it's it, it's close to my heart. Great, Andy M. Um, welcome to CPA. <clears throat> I'm Andy Morris Friedman. I'm currently the vice chair, uh, former chair of the committee. Um, it's some of the most rewarding and fulfilling work I've ever done to being on this committee. And so I think you're really gonna like it. Mark? Nice. Mark Dunn, I'm the representative from the Hadley Planning Board, as you can tell by my uh, virtual background. And uh, so I guess I've been on here about, this is the third year, because I think Joe used to do it. And it is, it's very rewarding to um, you know, be the stewards of this money that is dropped in our lap to spend towards good things that might not reach the top of the fiscal lists otherwise. You know, we, we have an opportunity to save history and do things without outdoor space and things like that that might otherwise get fiscally cut for more life sustaining, you know, but this is long-term quality for the town. So yes, I'm also very proud to be part of this. Ray, I'll let you introduce yourself. Ray, do you want to say what you can say oh, you're oh, representing? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, Ray Machaki, I'm, um, I am representing the uh, conservation from Edwin, uh, who's going to uh, ride off into the sunset and enjoy a hopefully a very nice retirement. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> he, sa he, says, he says this is an, he says this is a great opportunity and an awesome awesome group of people to work with. So I I, I didn't uh, you know everybody's looking for a volunteer, so I raised my hand and it's going to be quite interesting. Um, I I grew up in Hadley. I've been here all my life and. Uh, Currently, uh, I live up on Cummins Road. I, uh, I got two kids. Both of them are in, actually one's out of college now, and the other one's going to be a senior in college. Um, and uh, so, yeah, empty nester and just <laughs> trying to find stuff to do now, I guess. And this will still, still some time, I think. Andy? And very nice, to, very nice to meet everybody. Welcome. Andy K. Hello, uh, Andy Klopacki here. Good to see you again, Ray. Um, I, this is my second run on the uh, CPA committee. I was on it for five years when I was uh, with the uh, Park and Rec Commission. And now I am the uh, representative from the Finance Committee. And uh, as many have already said, it's a great uh, opportunity here to uh, put uh, taxpayers' dollars to good use. So uh, welcome aboard. And Denise, you. do you want to introduce yourself? Whoops, well, you're muted, Denise. <laughs> Hi, uh, Denise Barst demands. I'm part of the Historical Commission. Um, what else am I supposed to say? That you don't have to say anything else if okay. you don't want to. <laughs> How much you love the CPA committee? I do. I <laughs> so much that I'm on vacation and still here. So, well, thank you. Thank you. I'm Mary Fair. I've um, been on the committee three and a half years. Um, I helped with some applications through the CPA before that, so I had a little introduction that way. Um, and I'm current chair, and I'm at the one of the at large, which means the select board appoints has appointed me. And um, I have a lot of history and housing and um, land, open space, um, knowledge and background. So it, it all kind of helps helps me with what we're doing here. And it is, it's a great way. Hadley would never have spent some of the money they did on some of the projects if it meant, you know, an increase in uh, 
digital taxes, I think, and, and we certainly have gotten a lot of great things done. Um, good. Well, that's a brief introduction to the committee, and we're glad to have you on it. And um, welcome to nice, Paul Sposa. We're glad you're here from Florida. <laughs> So um, we're going to do just a few things before we get to your application. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we don't have any minutes right now to approve. We do have a um, plan in place to get those caught up. I'm hoping that the, when the land use coordinator position gets officially started, that we can ask that to be one of the tasks um, to go through those meetings and, and do up minutes. Um, we have a we have three, I think, that need to be written up. And other than that, we're all caught up. So um, that'll be a good way for this person to get to know our committee some if they were to do that. So because we won't have when they do get, I guess the position won't start until the fall. So when they do get started, there won't be much CPA stuff needed. So that would be a great way to um, have some have them get used to the committee and, and stuff like that. So we're we don't have minutes, but Treasurer's report. Um, let me pull it up. I'm going to share the screen. Can everybody see that okay? Yeah. Yes. Is it big enough? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, here's the latest figures. They're as of 6.30, um, well, they're as of 7.31 um, for some of it. They're still rolling over things. But anyways, here's our, our balances. Open space has 30,500, historic 6550, housing set aside 258,000. Um, we have our 500,000 we set aside in the reserve. So undesignated is um, just under a million three. And we have a million four um, outstanding in projects. So that's where we stand. Um, the, here's our last year ending that just ended June 30th. The state gave us 286,000, which was a 94% match over our previous year, um, and which is great. And the year before it was 100% match. So we've done real well the last two years. You can see the state match here drops off earlier than that. Um, last, the last two years, the state has had surplus funds and put an extra 10 and 20 million in the CPA. So that really helped boost our figures. And one of the big things is we're at 3% um, match and we're also a small town. I think that it's easier to fund us 100% than a much bigger place. Um, this year just started, the money has just started coming in with what was paid for real estate taxes um, in July. Um, so we, and the interest earnings flipped as well, which is nice. So that's, that, that's been good. It doesn't look as rosy right now. Um, the, the sales at the registry and the refinancing at the registry are way off. Um, the state is projecting round one to be about a 20% match. Last year, it was about a 39% match. And then the state put in an extra 20 million. They asked, they tried to get an extra 30 million put in this year and it got um, it got taken out, but they're gonna try again in the fall. So we'll be somewhere between probably 40 and 100%, which is a wide range for the state match, but we can pretty much count on the town portion. So that's still quite a, a large chunk getting added on. Um, so that's kind of where we are for um, where the funds are right now. Any questions on that or? All righty. Oh, um, actually, I'm sorry, I have a question. Yes. Um, the um, Is the amount of money deducted for the um, the school fields project listed in the budget of how much that will be. So the school fields budget was like a million four, um, right? And seven hundred and fifty thousand of that is going to be bonded. And that's not included in any of the figures I just said. But the seven hundred and forty thousand or so we approved from the CPA is part of it. Um, 
let's see the Hopkins 705,000 right. was included in those figures. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna have to pay the part that's bonded. So we'll have a little, we'll have extra expenses. Right. And, and a little less money than. Right, than right. That'll impact how much is available in future years. However, they haven't started the project yet. And um, the bonding isn't probably until a year from now. And depending on where the interest rates were, I talked with Linda Sanderson. She said that, um, you know, we could do short term bonding, which um, and pay off things faster if we wanted to. So a lot will depend on, you know, we'll work with her when she's ready to do any bonding. Andy? I don't know if you've driven by Hopkins recently, uh, but it's definitely started. Awesome. That's great. That was their plan was fall of this year. And that's great. Yeah, it's it's uh they've actually done a fair amount to the west side. That's they've even great. been rolling it out. So it's really great to see the uh, you know the, the fruits of uh, the labor of both that group, the the school committee and uh and CP CPA and then townspeople uh, being proven. That's wonderful. That'll be very visible and very enjoyed. So that's great. Is there a CPA sign already up, Andy? No, I didn't know it had started. <laughs> oh, okay. So I will get that over there. Thanks to Denise, we have two signs. One of them is currently at Golden Court because their windows are being done. Risa very nicely met me and walked me around and, and we decided where to put the sign. And so that we've got one up there and we'll certainly get one at the um, Hopkins Fields. All right, good thought. Good. Um, anything else on that? So in September, well, in our fall meeting, we elect chair, vice chair, secretary, and treasurer. Um, currently, I'm the chair, and Andy Morris Friedman is vice chair, and Mark Dunn is secretary, and we don't have a treasurer position um, filled because it was Cassandra. And um, anyone have thoughts for changes or? whether you're on one of those spots or want to be on one of those spots? Um, I'm happy to continue serving as vice chair, especially since I hardly have to do anything because you're such a great chair. Oh, thank you. So, so long as you're willing to stay the chair, I'm willing to stay the vice chair. How about that? All right. Well, I'm very willing to stay it if, if that's, you know, absolutely. Um, Mark, what are your thoughts? Well, uh, what would be my role if we have this land use person doing the minutes? So that's a good question. Um, we'll come up with something. <laughs> I think I think part of it will be coordinating with this land use staff person to make sure okay. yep. if the the various tasks are getting done. And it's interesting in the handbook. Um, it said the secretary is doing a lot of the communicating and stuff, which um, <clears throat> I'd be glad to pass on. So, you know, <laughs> there's, there's yeah, I, well. I would be happy to coordinate the minute production by the land use person and uh, start taking on some of the court of uh, the communication. <laughs> Great. So, yes, I would stay on as secretary. Anyone else have any if, other thoughts? If so desired. Yeah. I serve it to pleasure. <laughs> well, does someone want to make a motion for the current slate to continue with treasurer? Unless somebody wants to be treasurer um, as well. There's I've kind of just done that part. Hi, Diane. Welcome. Diane, um, Diane is ready. Diane Ray Michikowski is the new representative from the Conservation Commission. And um, Diane is the representative from the Park and Rec. So welcome, Diane. And um, thank you. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, that's fine. And Adam, welcome to Adam. He's somebody that's um, expressed interest of being on the committee. So I'm glad you're here to see what we do. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I was I was here at the start. I was just eating dinner. So oh, okay. <laughs> no, that's well. fine. Um, <laughs> If I am able to join the committee, I'd, I'd be interested in the treasurer position. So okay. happy to throw my hat in the ring there. Very good. Well, we'll leave it open for now and um, we can always vote again at, at 
meeting after that. Um, does someone want to make a motion for, um, I guess, me as chair and Andy Morris Friedman as vice chair and Mark Dunn as secretary? Yeah, I make a motion that we vote as a slate. Yep. One time. I don't think you have to make a motion for that, do you? I don't have to. Yeah, do that. Okay. Um, well, then I move that we vote um, as the, uh, for the people in the positions that the chair just read. Is there a second? Second. All those, any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Mark and Andy, Andy, Diane, yes. And Ray, all right. So we've got eight. Any opposed, any abstain? Eight, zero, zero. All right. The land use coordinator position I mentioned a little bit there, um, they've hired somebody to be the conservation commission staff person and they're in discussion with expanding her hours to be, I think she's 18 hours to expand to like another 17 hours to cover planning board um, and zoning board and um, Park uh, CPA, and it seems like there's one other one as well. So ours would be, you know, ours ours is not so much per month. Ours is kind of concentrated twice a year. And um, but I'm more than glad to show <laughs> show this person some of the things they could help us with. So hopefully that. Unfortunately, it's not in process quite yet. But go ahead, Mark. Uh, just point of order, as the secretary, going back, I believe you said eight zero zero, but aren't we actually nine? Well, we don't have that last position filled. We don't have Cassandra's position filled. So Edwin is no longer on the committee. Oh, oh, Ed, Edwin's here as a guest. I'm yeah. so used to Edwin being a, okay, got it. <laughs> nope, but thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. I didn't see him raise Edwin, his hand. So. Edwin. Mm -hmm. Edwin's turning me under control. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll we'll have more on that hopefully even at our last meet next meeting in September maybe it'll be farther along um, at least hopefully the person will have they've worked out the details and and be official but um, until then it may not really affect us much until um, in February or so. So we have one application today. Um, it's from Paul Kozo, who's here. He has be one vodka, as many of you know, on the um, the former St. John church right at 146 Russell Street and um, he's given us quite a bit of information on the building and um, was hoping to get some CPA and and um, Paula I'll let you start and I can certainly show some slides too if need be here. Um, Thank you Mary. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, Mary, thanks for helping me through this process. I think you and I have um, spoken about this for at least a couple of years so far. So um, yeah, September 9th, 2003, I moved to Hadley, uh, bought my first house, 27 years old, and kind of began my journey to be uh, a member of the Hadley community. Two years later, I started my own business. Uh, ever since I moved in, I saw the property at 146 Russell Street, and it was something that um, really caught my eye um, as being a practicing Catholic. It was important for me to see this building uh, not uh, not go anywhere, not be a parking lot. Um, I spent the better part of eight to 10 years uh, speaking with the bishop, speaking with the town about uh, the property and acquiring it um, after much persistence. Um, uh, the diocese sold it to me for $75,000 in 2014. Uh, prior to buying it, I was uh, met with the building inspector, a great Tim, and he said, Paul, there's probably a 0% chance you will own that property because it's landlocked. There's no parking. There's a lot of uh, barriers to entry to get this uh, piece of property, but was able to work with Tim and work with the town and purchase the property in 2014. Um, with the fact that we had six or seven parking spots uh, directly behind the, the old St. John's Church. So since I purchased it, 
um, I had invested a, uh, roughly another 100000 into the property, um, mainly with the steeple. Uh, the front of the steeple had some serious uh, water damage. So uh, that was the first thing I, I got done. They completed three sides of that project, and the person uh, from Vermont never came back to do the last, the, the rear part of the uh, steeple. Um, I fixed the inside, uh, refinished uh, the woodwork on it, and now it's kind of down to the point where there's some significant um, repairs needed to be done to the roof. Uh, to the plaster on the inside, to the windows. Um, my intent from the beginning is keep it exactly how it is, uh, to use it how I've been using it for my offices and for um, periodic um, events that the town has approved that after the senior center and the library have closed, uh, I can use the parking. But I think that the, the really big unique thing about this property is that it is landlocked as a business owner. It's really, there's not much I can do to generate revenue there um, because of the parking situation. Of course, people remember that um, when there was mass there years ago that people would park on Route 9 and such. And uh, that's not an option these days, clearly. So it's a property I treasure. Uh, I feel, um, you know, I'm, I'm the caretaker of this property and that uh, I, I would like to have it preserved for another 121 years, years old. I would like to have it preserved for another 100 years, especially it being the location it is in the center of town. So I submitted to Mary some um, work um, estimates. Again, uh, the one estimate for a lot of the interior and window work, uh, the gentleman was on vacation last week. I just got that today. Um, and there's some things that need to be kind of massaged through that. And then I hired a local contractor. I got an estimate for the roof. Um, as you can see, if you're sitting at the town hall, the roof has kind of been sagging for years. So the new roof, new um, plywood underneath that. So uh, I'm open to any questions and thanks for having me. Denise? Um, I don't think there is, but can you tell me if there's a preservation restriction on the building? You're, are you asking me? Yeah, I couldn't find that there was, but I just wanted to make sure that I was right. <laughs> I don't know what that means, so I guess I don't know. Oh yeah, um, it's through the Massachusetts Historical Commission and it would make it so that um, any like changes to the building would have to be, or the exterior of the building, not the interior, would have to um, like fit with the town's historical commission's rules. Yeah, my, my intent is to keep it exactly how it is, just restore what's there, not make any changes. I like it exactly how it is. Mm -hmm. Denise, how involved is a preservation restriction to put on a building? Do you do you have a sense? Yeah, um, it's not the easiest or most quick process, um, but our um, town attorney is very well versed in that, and they've they, we we worked on that with the um, North Headley Village Hall, and I know they've done other restrictions um, around town. So the the church is in the National Historic District or yeah, National Historic District. Um, but that doesn't actually make any difference to like you can still tear down a building or make updates to buildings without um, any kind of approvals or process. Andy Morris Friedman. Do we know if the building is on the uh, Massachusetts list of historic structures? I don't know. I know it's in the the National Register, um, like as a district, which makes it automatically on the state register. But I don't know about the specific building. 
Because I, I think uh, I think to use CPA money, you either already have to be on the historic register or get a letter from the historical commission, not the society, mm -hmm. the commission, saying that it's a valuable property and um, uh, you know worth uh, preserving historically significant. Paul was, wasn't able to get that before this meeting because the um, com historical commission doesn't meet until after this meeting, but he, if they agree, he'd have it for our next meeting. Okay, good. Um, but that's a good point, Andy. Paul, I, I'd like you to talk a little bit, to use CPA money is public money, it's the town's money. Um, and we haven't had really situations like this where it's gone to somebody in a private home or private business, um, except for APR and, or, or, you know, there's been some at the church or some at the historical society with the samplers, but those are kind of, you know, public entities. Um, so one thing that would other, it can be used for private things, but there needs to be a strong um, public good that's that's um that is benefiting the townspeople because it's the town's money so can you address address a little bit of what you think the the public good would be um by doing some of this work yeah i think um the first thing is one of only five really historic buildings in downtown hadley the center of hadley that the old saint john's church is uh you know in the center of town and it's something I think a lot of people were married there. A lot of people had their children baptized there. I see stories and pictures all the time. And as a town member, I think it's a building that needs to be preserved so that um, you have Hadley has a good amount of historical buildings. Um, I've every event I do, uh, I have to have a nonprofit um, for um, to do the full liquor license. So we've been benefiting the new Newman Center now that's completed. So the next event, I have to pick another nonprofit. Um, I have had many people reach out wanting to rent the hall or use the hall space, which I've done a number of times free of charge. And I feel like me as a business owner, I'd like to do that more once the property is kind of up to shape um, and I feel that it's fixed. Um, when Mary, when you visited within the last 30 days, I had a, some of the plaster falling in in the back right-hand corner that needs to re be repaired. And um, so I've, I've started to see that the, there's definitely a need, um, an immediate need for some of these repairs to be done. But I think it's one of only a handful of buildings in town that has that old New England feel and I want to have it preserved. The Secretary of Interior Standards, um, I sent you a copy of that. Are you fine with making sure any work done would follow that, which is a lot of it is replacing with like kind and hopefully we're repairing before anything's replaced. And Yeah, like I, like I said, it's a property that I treasure for many reasons, but um, I even... I'm, I'm maintaining exactly how it is. I just want it to be preserved and, you know, things... Repairs that are done need to be done. The only thing I added was the V1 logo out front, which I tried to keep a very classy look um, for the town with the Goshen stone. So my intention is to keep it exactly how it is, but just fix the, the issues that the building's having. I love that this structure is still existing in the center of our town. And I do like what you've done with it, and I think it's great that it's being used, but I guess I'd like to find out how we would go about supporting this, like the right way, so we could be able to do it, or, um, you know, what the process would be, because I know we haven't, you know, done something like this in the past, but being from town, long time in town, and, you know, being a partner church with, you know, most Holy Redeemer, I, I like the idea of keeping the integrity of it, and viability of it. Mark? Question for Paul. I am if I if I missed it, I apologize, but did you 
get into any detail about what repairs would the scope would be on windows because I know that historical tends to um, want you to repair existing windows instead of replace with new vinyl or something like that. Yeah, great question, Mark. In the um, quote I sent Mary, um, I'm using the company that did um, the uh, Holy Family Church in South Deerfield and did some of the repairs for Holy Redeemer. They actually specialize in church restoration. So I'm using them for a lot of that stuff. And then uh, a local built building roofer, which I have that estimate I sent to Mary also to use a local business. But um, yeah, in there is something like $46,000 and that's to uh, repair the wood, to um, crack any, uh, yeah. So er everything in that quote is about keeping the windows exactly how they are. It's just preserving them. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna... Um... Share my screen just might help with. And and like I said, I just received these quotes within the last few days. There's definitely some. I can come back the next time and have some exact things. Um, again, it's the roof, it's the steeple, it's the windows, and it's the plaster on the inside. Um, and also the north, uh, the west side steps are totally deteriorated. So those five things are the main things. Um, as far as the repairs that need to be done in the, you know, in the next year or two, so that you keep this building going for another hundred years. I quickly did this, just list, tried to list, hopefully I got everything, um, Paul, that you had sent. And I sent everything on to the committee members. Um, but scaffolding setup was 18,650. Plaster, and, this is all interior. Plaster and painting, 44,000. Main room painting, 27,500. And some of the decorative ribs and everything was another 19,750. Exterior, the window frames, 35,000. Tower restoration, 42,000. The roof, I think, was 36,000. Does that sound right? Um, yeah. When, um, uh, Phil, uh, I forget his, sorry, his last name, um, this behind me, so going to tell me, um, that, um, we had some other things there was, uh, along the gutters, yeah, but there was some wood trim there, but that, they say between 36 and 50 for that. The whole project I expect to be about 250,000, the 50,000 with, uh, you know, uh, I'm putting in the 20% and then asking CPA funds for the 80%. And the ramp inside stairs. So to get back to um, Diane's question, there's there's a couple mechanisms and, you know, Andy Morris Friedman and others may chime in, but one is to put historic, require historic preservation, um, which means that no matter who owns that building, they won't be able to change the exterior of it. Um, and they really, they can't tear it down. They can't do, you know, they have to be maintaining it. Um, and that's that's often done with CPA funds um, that they, you know, they recommend it. One thing another town has done, and I mentioned this to Paul, is, you know, I've seen a couple of them require, you know, if the property is sold within 10 years, CPA funds are repaid to the town because that that work added value to the building. So um, since it isn't long term, it would come back. I don't think you would do both, um, but those are those are two options. Um, I think. Well, I should I should I have a few other thoughts, but um, I'm going to see if does anyone else have some things they'd like to to comment on. And if I, I can't see everybody with the shared screen, so if I don't call any, um, Edwin, I'll just see if anyone else in the committee. Mm -hmm. Andy to, Morris. Andy, go, more, go ahead. Uh, Paul, what would, what do you think would happen to the building if you don't get this project funded? Mm. Um, well, be, before, good, good question. Um, before I was thinking about doing this and kind of what moved it ahead was um, I had offered it to the town at a fair market value, uh, knowing that these expenses were coming up. And again, if I was 
with this property sitting on five acres and could kind of operate a business how you know most people do. This would probably be a moot point where it was a, a generator of income. But, but since I'm pretty much landlocked on four sides, that makes it very difficult to have any income on this property. Uh, I offered it to the town. The town wasn't interested in terms of uh, they didn't want to have to upkeep it. They didn't want another property. And this is what, just what I was told. So um, if I don't get the repairs done, you know, I, I would consider uh, seeing if there was interest in just selling it, seeing what I could get for it. Again, finding something where I didn't have to get what I'm going to have to put it. You know, there's a reason why a lot of these churches sit empty for years, right? Because they're so expensive to um, to fix. Uh, so I don't know. I, it's a good question. I would I definitely, I would consider selling it or try to piecemeal to the repairs together over a long period of time. But I don't think some of these things can't be put off. So would you say that it's likely that if the project doesn't go forward, the future of the building is in question? I'm just going to say, I don't know. I, I'm honestly, I, I don't know what direction I'll take. You know, I, I don't, yes, I don't know. That's my honest answer. Okay. I love it. So I don't ever want to sell it, but you know, may, maybe one of the uh, the people with the house next door would want, the, you know, want it for something or, or I don't know. Okay. Well, I have more thoughts on this, but Mary, why don't you say what you wanted, wanted to say, uh, unless everybody else. Um, I guess that one thought I had is, I mean, I think from a public good point of view, it's really the exterior that benefits the town um, because the, in the interior is private. Um, and I know Paul said he, he could rent it out for things, but it still is his private business. Um, it's really one thought I had was, what if we, what if we go forward with the 152,000 um, for the exterior and, um, and say that, you know, would that, would that be, an easier, not an easier, but a more appropriate, I guess I should say, use of CPA funds. And I don't know, maybe the whole thing is very, very much so, but it seems like really um, what people benefit from is seeing the building um, from the outside. And Paul, let me just say too, this, this first meeting is discussion and fact finding and getting us thinking about it and if we have other things we want to you know ask you to look into for example the preservation restriction and um it's we're not going to vote on it till the till the next meeting um, totally mary i mean as a as a businessman an entrepreneur every dollar is important so uh this is a lot of money i know so this is why i'm here to get feedback from the team and right. from the committee so it's great to be here and just to hear what people have to say. Um, anyone else on the committee? And I'll get to Edwin after Andy Morris Friedman says more, but um, anyone else on the committee want to say something or ask questions? And Andy does. Speak up because I can't hear. Andy K does. Okay, Andy, go back here. Um, yes. There's already been a lot of um, good points brought up, so I won't rehash them. I guess uh, one question I would have is uh, with the walls, plaster work being done and the like, uh, and recognizing that when historic windows have to remain intact as they can, is there any uh, energy component um, to this work? Uh, will there be, if there's work going to be, you know, new plywood in the roof, will there be new insulation there? Is there uh, uh, you know, with the new stretch code coming down the road, I don't know if there was uh, a component there while this thing might might be a part that would be um, consideration. Yeah, I'd be, you know, like I said, I want to keep everything in terms of the historical in line, Andy, and uh, you don't realize how cold it is in New England winter until you have to heat a 2,000 square foot church. So, Things that can be as uh, I can save money on uh, my oil bill and my electric bill, I'm all for it. 
Well, I mean, those types of things help fund preservation efforts down the road too. The savings realized. Uh, personally, I would like to, to take take a little bit more time to just uh, take a, a finer look at it since most of the information came in earlier today, and I haven't had a great, uh, fair amount of time before the meeting to take a hard look at it. Absolutely. Andy, Morris Friedman, do you want to add some more? Sure. Uh, Paul, one of my roles on the committee is to say the things that everybody is thinking but doesn't want to say. So, so here I go. Um, this uh, is a difficult proposal for CPA. Um, it does seem to me like it's quite ready. Um, there's the vote for the historical uh, commission that yet, is yet to be done. There's the preservation restriction, which needs to be looked into. Um, uh, if uh, if the, the costs usually go up, if you use uh, preservation techniques, um, that also needs to be explored. Um, uh, as Mary alluded to, the, the public benefit and the historical benefit is to keep the look of, the, um, of that area of the town uh, the same. And so I could see CPA funds being used for restoration or preservation of some of the outside architectural elements of the building. Um, but the inside, since it's not a public building, I wouldn't feel would be an appropriate use for CPA funds. Um, in addition, the ramp and the side stairs, I don't know if they were uh, added later to the building, uh, if they can be seen uh, by the public. So I would have some questions about that. Um, uh, I think the tower restoration, the window frames, and the gutters would be okay, so long as it's, it, it all looks the same as it does now. Uh, and I'm, I'm not sure about the roof. Um, um, but, so that's the, 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 the CPA part of it. Um, you know, the committee can do whatever we want to the proposals. We can slice them up, we can fund this part, we can not fund that part. Um, so we can really do anything we want in terms of the proposal, except um, except agree to spend the money, town meeting has to do that. Um, so that's how that process works. Um, but I think you're gonna have a really tough time in town meeting getting this through um, for all the reasons that people just mentioned. Um, and town meeting can be pretty pretty brutal, you know, to, to people sometimes. So you're gonna to have to stand up at town meeting and make your case and present this and uh, weather the storm. Um, and I would be very surprised if this passed because it's a private property and a private business and this is public money. So I'm not saying you shouldn't try, but it's a pretty big lift. Um, and you should prepare yourself for what you're gonna to have to do to get this through town meeting. So think about that um, between now and our next meeting. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Andy. I think the roof is certainly important for preserving the structure and that's one of the things CPA funds can be used for. Um, so I would think, I would think the roof it, in my opinion, is certainly viable. Um, but it is, you know, it is, I told Paul, it's uncharted territory. It's, we haven't had a private, um, but it is a very historic building with a lot of um, presence right in the center of town. So that that's kind of what makes it unique from a lot of other private homes or businesses. So that's, that's a thought. Um, Edwin, please let us know what you think. I, I totally agree with Andy Morris Friedman. He hit he hit the nail right on the head. And also, uh, Paul is a present owner, and we don't know what's going to happen two, three, four, five, six years down the road. 
he could sell it. So that's just what I'm concerned about. But I do think that Andy Morris Friedman hit the nail right on the head. And uh, thank you, Mary. Yeah, thank you, Edwin. One one thing we with, I mean, there'd be a grant agreement with the town just outline. You know, this is the funds, and this is what they're to be used for. And you know, he has to report back to the select board. Um, but um, one benefit from using CPA funds on this private building is we can require a historic um, preservation. So that that's something that really can um, benefit the town in the long run. It also can lower the value um, for if somebody's selling a building that has a preservation restriction versus not, um, they may get less money for that. So that's a consideration for, you know, Paul as well. But that's one, that is one benefit the town gets by being willing to basically invest in this building is that um, it's there'll be this reserve so that no matter who owns it down the road they have to to follow this so that that is one thing that um, that is one thing that the one piece of this that we need to think about as well. All right, I'm going to stop sharing the screen so we can see each other better. Any other thoughts on this? Yeah, I have a quick question. Um, sure. And I, I don't know if I missed it. My, my computer connection is <laughs> Have we done, and this, so this question's probably already been answered, but have we done any um, funding of any other build, private buildings, privately homes, buildings, anything like that um, in, in the town of Hadley for something like this? We've done we've done the first congregational church and the the North Hadley congregational church have received funds in the past, which are not a private business or a private home. Um, and the historical society got money for restoring the samplers. They're not a town business, but they're the historical society. Um, I looked back. The only other individuals that have received funds are um, through the APR program, farm farmland that's been preserved. That's gone to individual people. So this would be the first private, first yeah. private person, or pri private entity to to uh, to receive CPA funding. But many towns and have done it, including Springfield. Even had if you lived in a certain neighborhood, they give you up to twenty five thousand to help work on the outside of your house just to preserve help people preserve the neighborhood. So it's it's not outside of CPA um, guidelines. It's just not something Hadley has done. Okay, no, I, I mean, I'm just wondering, you know, are we gonna start being, are we gonna start receiving requests for private homes on West Street, say? Right, right. I, Which we know. could even today, but you're right. It's, it's, it is something that yeah. is new. And it, it is it is right in the historic district, and it's right in the center of town, which makes it a little unique. But absolutely, right. other you know, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, somebody right. else had Denise. Did you have your hand raised? Oh, I just thinking more about that. I mean, it this would be the first thing that we're sending to town meeting, which is for a private business. So I, it sets an important precedent, whether it gets passed or not. What we decide to do, um, and. I know at the forefront of my mind is a preservation restriction. And I also um, saw that Great Barrington did um, something where that if the property changed hands, then the amount that the CPA was um, was given back to the town, whatever the award was. Um, so that, that was an agreement that that town came up with. So I was, I'm just wondering if Paul would be open to those and you don't have to, I don't know if we should talk about it right now. Yes, but. Denise, I did see the contract that the uh, North, the church across the street had that agreement in place. That's fine with me. A 10 year sale restriction. 10 year pay it back. Nice. I think, I think it's, I think it's hard to say into the future. If somebody sold a building in 30 years, it's hard to say how much these repairs were worse than 30 years but you know maybe a a time limit is a good is a good thing to do um, i think i think the one across the street was t uh, 10 years all right so 
Um, Paul, if you can, if you want to look at, well, you'll meet with the historic commission, historical commission, um, and because their recommendation is required for us to even vote on it, um, and then maybe they can help you with looking into us what's involved in the historic preservation as well. Um, that's something we haven't haven't done from our from the CPA side, but the historical commission has done it. Um, anything else before Paul heads off? Uh, Paul, maybe you'd like to get some of these documents and forward them to your attorney uh, to see what they think, uh, whether it's in your interest, whether it's whether the restrictions are worth the money um, and kind of make your decision that way. Um, the, another option you have is to um, uh, withdraw the proposal for now, get all these ducks in a row and come back in six months when you have time to figure out all these, all these questions. Um, it's not like you apply once and if you get turned down, you can never apply again. So that's another option. If you think you can answer these questions before our next meeting, then by all means, knock yourself out. But it's it's a lot of work. Between, in, what's our next meeting? Three weeks? September 18th. Yeah, it's a lot of work to do before that. Yeah, almost four weeks, I think. Um, and Andy Morris, if he did uh, proceed and we voted it down, what is the restriction before he can apply again? Is that a year? No, I don't believe there's any rule at all. Oh, okay. I don't yeah. think so either. Okay. No. Um, so Paul, yeah. mixed mixed thoughts here, <laughs> and um, but we'll we'll do some work on it and and ask you to and and um, we'll see you on September eighteenth. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Alrighty. Thank Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, let me go back to the other one. Might uh, might people feel a little freer to speak about this now that uh, the applicant's not here? Do you want to go there, Mary, or do you just that's wanna... fine. It, the meeting's certainly recorded, um, yeah. so it will be on the YouTube. But that's fine. Does anyone else have anything else they'd like to say? Well, I would tend to ag agree with what Andy, as he was attempting to speak our minds. You know, I, I think that those things are all true. Rosa, you have anything you want to add? Uh, one thing is, I mean, we our role is one: is it appropriate through CPA funds, and two: is it a good fit for Hadley? Um, so it's it's not, you know, it, we're kind of the gatekeepers here. Um, when we had the um, the barn proposal that was withdrawn, uh, I don't know about everybody else's experience, but I had a lot of town people come up to me and give me a lot of crap about it. And uh, it wasn't wasn't fun. So um, you know, yeah. to stand up for the applicant's right to make the proposal. Yeah. You know, um, so we need to think about that. Yeah, is it a good fit for the town? Right. Um, and he, the main reason he withdrew the barn proposal was once he saw the Secretary of Interior standards, what he'd have to do wasn't what he was planning on doing. Um, so that that wasn't a good fit for him. Um, yeah. No, I, 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 oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go. Well, what strikes me is, can we imagine Hadley with St. John's Church just falling into ruins? I that's what I was going through my head. I think preserving the church is a good fit for Hadley. The fact that it's a private business now with private ownership, 
if if there's ways of dealing with that, I I'm interested in them because I I just don't want to drive down Route Nine and see it turned you know painted pink. You know, somebody buys it and turns it into apartments and paints it pink. Mm, that that seems unsavory to me. So that's another another side of the equation. Thank you. I, I will briefly add that uh, that property is in the historic uh, village overlay district. So there are a fair amount of restrictions uh, to modifications that can be done to the exterior. But as he said, if if this proposal doesn't go through, he doesn't know what he's going to do. And I mean, and clearly it sounds like he can't afford to pay for all the repairs himself. That's why he's coming here. Uh, and he, he could sell it to someone else who wouldn't even care. I'm not sure it, how marketable it is with no parking. There's not a lot of uses that it could be transformed into. Um, in a certain sense, it's a kind of an albatross. And I'm, I'm at this point, I, I would lean positively towards uh, contributing towards the exterior fix up, you know, as was somewhat alluded to, because that is where we as a community would benefit from it shaping part of the context of our center of town. But as Mary and uh, maybe Andy touched on the fact that you know, the interior is not probably uh, a, an appropriate expenditure of these funds because it, so it doesn't benefit the town. Right? So I'm pretty new to this. So it would be a, a matter of, of helping Paul understand that. And if he's willing to take on financially the interior repairs and then uh, or understanding that it's unlikely the town's going to go for the interior repairs or that we would recommend that. But if we could help him with the exterior. We, if we, if we recommended just if we voted to just do the exterior, that's all that would go forward to the town. Exactly. It's what it's what our if if we if a majority vote turns down the any part of the application, it doesn't go any farther. And right. If there's amendment made to just fund part of it, and that should pass. Then that would go on to the town. Um, yes. So it can like Andy said, it can be all or none or part. Um, yeah, and, and like and like Andy said, he it's he's going to run the gauntlet through <laughs> town meeting. It, that's going to be a tough, tough hill to climb. Very tough. I'm Although wondering that, if I'm sorry, just uh, that in the past we've reached out to uh, state CPA to check for viability of uh, projects for funding. And uh, I don't know. If, I hadn't before today because it was so general. We didn't have any figures until today. And I just, I, I didn't feel I could even ask them to look at it, but I will certainly send this on to Stuart Saginaw and ask him to respond before September 18th. Um, yeah, he's on vacation. He sees a lot of projects that are private. So um, I don't think they're, cer they're certainly a minority, but it won't, you know, that won't be a, that won't be a no to him just because it's private, but I think he'll have some um, thoughts on the preservation restriction, and and I'm going to ask him about the um, you know paying it back as well. Um, but yeah, thank you, Mary. Anything else? Well, I'm I'm just thinking about one of the questions that I think Andy asked him is. What would happen if you don't if this doesn't go forward? And it sounds like it's falling into disrepair. It doesn't have parking. You know, it really yeah. um, doesn't have a lot of promise, or uh, it's not helping his bottom line of his company. I am trying to envision how it could go forward. You know, other than being abandoned and 
going into disrepair and I, I don't know what kind of venture, but something could buy that and an adjacent property. Uh, I don't know that the what's adjacent to that? Is there a house on There's the east? Goodwin Memorial on one side. Yeah, but on the east is it is there a house between that and the and the Legion? Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. So maybe if they if they bought those together, they could get some parking. Otherwise it's gonna be, you know, if anyone buys it, they're gonna have a hefty um TDR transfer of development rights to make up for their lack of parking. And then they still have to like sh shuttle people in there. It's, uh, it's interesting. I mean, I, I kind of feel like if, if we don't help them maintain the exterior, what's it gonna, is it going to become a derelict building? Right. Exactly. And it's kind of a catch 22. It's a big open space. You walk in and it's just the big room with a very high ceiling and then a few little, one or two little bathrooms and an office. And, and then, um, so it, it, you know, there's not much to the building. Um, it's, yeah. That's all I have. Thank you. Anything else? What is the... Um, what do we do with the first congregational church, the 10 year payback? I, you know, I, I'll double check the grant agreement. I'm not sure it, there were certain things suggested, but I'm not sure that any of that was required. Okay. The clock involved. Yeah, the, the clock and the steeple. Um, but they do have a grant agreement that says, you know, it just spells out these funds can only be used as voted on and, you know, they, they, um, and one thing I didn't mention to Paul, um, actually I will, is the town has a hard time paying deposits. I noticed a lot of his require deposits and the town likes to pay it after the work is done. So they've gotten away from that a little bit just because it's getting so hard to find anybody <laughs> that will do that. So they have paid some deposits, but it's hard. Again, it's town money. You want to make sure the work is done. Um, so. Maybe he can use his 20% to pay to the deposits. Well, if he's doing the interior, then um, that, that uses more than 20%. Um, but yeah, it's... Although he would have to do the exterior first. I mean, he would wisely not fix the plaster before he fixes the roof leaks. Yeah. So, no. And the inside is, I mean, he's, the inside, the ceiling work, it, it definitely would make a huge difference in how attractive the inside is. But that's, again, that's his business. That's, you know, that's, that doesn't benefit the town. If it was, if it was going to be a performance hall or it was going to be, you know, things that the town could use for various things, that would be, that would have some town benefit. But as a private business, um, it, it really doesn't. Um, yeah. Or it's not uh, ADA accessible. Well, it was with that ramp. Code. See, and that's one thing about the ramp, Andy. It does make it ADA accessible, right. which again, I mean, like but the, the public isn't going into there. Yeah. So I mean, like the bathrooms. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. This um, is going to be done. Okay. I didn't see that. Do you do something like to preserve the exterior? Does all the would like his business sign have to be removed? Or could that stay? I don't know. Yeah, it's a good question. I, I, I just, I don't know. Okay, that, um, that that's a good question for the coalition. Yeah, yeah, I'm writing it down. See, Ray, they... you, Ray, you're, Ray, you're already contributing. <laughs> that much. <laughs> One thing the CPA funds can do is to be able to preserve the building so it can be used. And somehow the sign on the building is a way for him to be able to use it as his business. But I'll yeah. ask Stuart to, um, to do that. Um, anything else on, on Paul's applications? All right, the next thing we have is um, outstanding projects. So I'm going to 
Share my screen again. Uh, make sure I got the right one. Um, hopefully you're seeing what I'm seeing. Yes. Here is the second one, Town Pillars is in red and water testing is in red. Yes. Okay. So here's what's outstanding, a million, almost a million four. And this does not include the 750,000 bonding that's in addition, because um, that's not coming right out of the CPA funds in total. Um, we have 3250 left in the CPA expense fund. However, it's going to be 10,000 next year. Um, the, the ones in red are the ones that were supposed to be done by um, this fall town meeting. The town pillars and the town hall, the columns and painting and all the pillars and stuff, these two bids together, the 34.8 and the 30,006. Um, the bids did go out in 8.7. They were in the newspaper and they are, the bid requirement is to turn in bids, I think the beginning of September or so. So that's in process. Um, so we can put in a vote to extend that. Um, and then the water testing, um, we met with them a year ago, or more than a year ago, it was a year ago, and they were to use it by 620, we had extended it already once, um, and then, or we'd claw it back, um, so at this point, um, that 1220 it was not spent, um, so, um, if anyone felt we should continue it, we could, but the other thing we can do is claw it back. Um, that was Lake Warner? That was, was the Board of Health. That was Board of Health, um, and it was voted on in 2020. They were going to expand it to the reservoir and do all this, and then COVID, they were, COVID hit, <laughs> and they were very busy with that, and then they, you know, reorganized, and then they were going to use it again, and it just, it, so we extended it another year and it, it just didn't, um, it didn't get used. Um, they have been, you know, they have an expense fund of their own and it really isn't a use of CPA funds. I guess the, the outer argument was it makes recreation better, but it's, it's really a normal operating expense. So it was a bit of a stretch to begin with. Um, so at this point, you know, when we met with them a year ago, we basically said, all right, let's give you till June. Well, we gave them really till now and it hasn't been used. So um, that's where that's at. Do you need a to call it back? Yeah, we'll do, let me keep, let me just go through this and then we'll, we'll um, take a vote. Okay. Um, the Hockenham fence, um, I talked with Carolyn Brennan and the DPW has kind of taken that over um, from the cemetery committee. And there's there's some issues with the contractors. So it's a little bit stalled right now. Um, most of it was later um, for the Hockenham Cemetery. And, it, and somehow they paid, they took some of their funds out of later bid things than the earlier ones. So this 2,400 I feel has kind of already been spent, but hopefully that'll be used up um without having to extend it um because town between now and october hopefully it will be but we certainly could vote to extend it as well like i said if they had paid everything out of the um going back to the earliest i think that would be zero by now anyways um but that's that's up that's there and then the last one is the golden court windows um which are supposed to be used by October 16th. And that's installation started last week and should just take a few few weeks. So that we don't even have to address because that's in progress. Um, so really I think for extensions, um, we can do the town hall pillars and then um, we don't need to go Golden Court. See how you feel about the Hawkeye fence. I think at this point, hopefully it'll certainly be done by the the annual town meeting. Um, so I think we don't probably have to do that one um, and then claw back the water testing. Um, do you want me to make a motion or does somebody want to or? 
Uh, so is, are we going to do it in two motions, one right. for the extensions and one for the clawback? Sure. All right. Well, I will make a motion that we uh, do a one-year extension on the uh, Town Pillars project. Second. Are we doing each project or as a slate, I guess, each, each project? Yeah, it's the same project. They just got money twice. Okay. I I guess my only thought is I'd almost give them two years. Two years. It just it just seems like I know it's out for bid, but we don't have a bid yet. And if it needs to be tweaked and gone out for bid again, that seems to take like half a year. And I I amend my motion to two years. Second. Any other, any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Um, I can't see everyone. So is there any opposed? Any abstain? So eight zero zero. Thank you. Um, how do you feel about the Hockenham fence? Should we just, it's almost down to all gone and um, unless they end up with a new contractor and things are really stalled. Hopefully that'll be spent very shortly. But let's give them another year. What the heck? To vote on it? Okay. Yeah. That's All what right. I say. Okay, so I'm making a motion that we extend the Hockenham Fence project by one year to what? 2023? 20, 24. 24. Yeah. We've got 2,400 on the Hockenham Fence and we have another... 25 grand here. Um, and I guess the rest has all been spent. I guess technically we're asking town meeting to extend it, right? Right, exactly. This, yeah. if we, by us, this is a recommendation. So by us doing this, it gets put on a, the warrant and it gets voted on. Um, and it's usually in the fall, not a consent agreement. So there is discussion. Um, so, Actually, actually, just for um, well, I because it's not a consent agreement. In some ways, it's nice to have it all in one. But they are two different topics, so I think it's fine. Um, any other discussion on the Hoffman and Fence before we vote? That was seconded, right? Not yet. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Eight zero. The Golden Court windows shouldn't even be an issue. Um, does someone want to make a motion for the water testing to be clawed back, either clawed back or extended? I would. Oops, I would make a motion to claw back. I'd second. Second. Any other yep. discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Just a quick look at some of the other projects. Um, the Goodwin repairs and the Goodwin study is, um, the study was to see about an elevator. And that is just kind of, again, at a um, crossroads of either, they put some out for bid, didn't get good bids. Um, so, I don't know at this point if they're going to start over and or build on this or what. So that that isn't up until next um, summer for our next you know our our annual meeting um, in June of or May of twenty four. So we'll we'll be discussing that. Uh, I'm pretty sure next meeting, the clock repair and steeple. The clock repair got put off because they found out the steeple needed a lot of work. Um, they went to get the permits for the steeple and were told, oh, you have to have an engineer's study, which they hadn't been told earlier. So they're kind of, that's kind of at a stall right now as well. Um, and then the Hopkins playing fields, um, as Andy said, it's broken ground, which is great and hopefully right on schedule. Um, I don't know about restoring the samplers. I didn't get an update on that, um, but I imagine that that's in progress. Um, 
Lake Warner, they're working on that, um, raising their, the friends of Lake Warner are raising their portion of the funds. Um, and then Historical Commission, um, actually I'll let Diane, uh, Denise rather. Denise, do you wanna update us a little on that? Um, yeah, they're working on um, translating the signs into Spanish and need to um, work with the graphic designer to, to make those look good on the other side. Um, and then we'll get those printed. Um, the walking tour is, I think, about to be printed if it's not already done. And then um, the driving tour is being recorded right now by some of the interns with uh, Hadley Media. Fantastic. Yeah. The Russell School Study um, is not out of the gate yet, um, mostly because other other projects were ahead of it that needed bid packages put forward, but hopefully that will be out in time for us to have information, you know, for next February, um, or at least for somebody to do an application for next February. So that's that's a quick update on 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 that million four that's outstanding. So there it is. And one thought I had um, just to think about. It is when there's a, especially a building project, do we wanna maybe do um, three years instead of two for a time limit? It just seems like, especially if it needs a bid package through town hall, it just seems like we keep running into trouble with two years being not enough. And it does take time at town meeting to um, to go through it. it. On the other hand, people get an update on where things are at, that's not so bad, but... Um, it just seems like we have to do a lot of extensions. Yeah, I, I agree. I think town meeting time is valuable and having to vote and re-vote is the pain in the neck. Yeah. So I think three years is good. I also um, think it's a lot of stress. Some 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 of the people are very concerned that their time is coming up and yeah. it's like, no, it's okay. We can give you more time. And, you know, sometimes it's out of their control. Like, what's holding it up, especially if it's, you know, a bid package involved. Um, good, all right, so. On the other hand, words. these projects are taking so long. It's just really discouraging. And, and all these projects that we voted in 2020, they're not gonna have enough money to do the work because of the inflation. So they're gonna have to come back to get more money. Yeah, which is the good one, yeah. Well, yeah, any of them. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, the the pillars on town hall have been out there for a while. Yeah. They, they have. Better they better fix them soon before they fall down. Yeah. And and once they look really good, town halls, the rest of it's not going to look so good, especially. Right. You know? Uh, I know that's true in my house. <laughs> All right. Well, we we voted on those. We'll do the warrants up. Um, Andy has a as is our as a representative to the CPA coalition. Um, oh, well, the official title, Andy. I'll let, turn it over to you. You had wanted to give an update. Yeah, there's a uh, there's an advisory committee for the CPA coalition, which until now has not uh, had that much to do, um, because uh, Stuart and Chase are the two employees of the coalition. They were supposed to have a third one, but with COVID, they didn't. They never hired anyone. Um, uh, we pay yearly dues to the coalition based on the size of our town and the amount of money that we receive. Seventeen hundred and fifty dollars a year. We pay. yeah at, yeah, and they give us technical assistance and help us out and all that kind of thing. Um, uh, they, but the 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 organization with the fiduciary responsibility. And the HR responsibility for the coalition is shifting. Um, uh, oh, I just forgot the name of the new one. It's from a land trust to uh, an organization that does this kind of work for, for nonprofits. Was this the fourth sector or something like that? Uh, yes, yes, I think it is. Yes. Um, and so the steering committee will now have more responsibility for supervising the the two employees of the coalition. So it's gonna be some really big changes um, uh, in terms of 
the local towns uh, representatives on the steering committee will be able to, will now in effect be the bosses of Stewart and Chase and can actually tell them to do things. Um, and so everybody's kind of feeling their way through it. Um, I think the first thing the steering committee is gonna do is give them both raises because <laughs> they haven't had raises in a while. Um, so that's something that's happening. Uh, we do our meetings quarterly on Zoom, although they're once a year, I think they're gonna meet in Boston. Um, and the only representative uh, west of Worcester. Um, and so that's why they accepted me on the steering committee, even though I don't help with diversity, which is another big problem that they have. Um, but I'll be out there plugging for Western Massachusetts. Um, uh, mostly they do lobbying, right? Um, but also if there are changes in the CPA program, they will come from the steering committee through the coalition to the legislature. So one of the things I'd like to do is to expand the use of CPA money for uh, energy efficiency projects for uh, public buildings. Um, I don't know if there's much of a chance of that happening, um, but it's one of the reasons why I joined the, joined the committee. Um, so hopefully when they have their meeting in Boston, somebody on the coalition will put me up because I really don't want to have to get a hotel room or charge our, our CPA committee uh, to send me to Boston for this meeting. I can see town meeting asking why we bought, why you bought me a hotel room. Um, uh, and so that's the short update. Thank you, Andy, for being on it. And, and also not only representing Hadley, but a small town as well. Um, that's important. Andy did ask if the part of our funds um, could be used just to help reimburse some mileage um, driving to Boston. And I, I think that's fine if, um, if does everyone agree? Well, I, haven't, I haven't decided whether to ask for it or not, we'll see. Oh, okay. <laughs> I would buy brownies from your bake sale for your hotel room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So a um, couple things for our next meeting. Um, Andy and I have been kind of back and forth on a few things and, and I'm gonna send out a list of questions. Um, we, you know, we won't have as much to go over at the next meeting um, other than of course Paul's application. And one is you know, just things to think about how to make the CPA committee better, how to make it more friendly, how to make it to people to use, how to, um, you know, so we'll, we'll send around some questions if you guys can think about them and you know, see what people want to respond to. Um, Andy, is that you think the best way to do that? Just um, Sure, yeah. sure. You know, it's not a quiz. It's uh, questions to start a discussion. Yeah. And then, and then the other thing I've mentioned a few times is having an FAQ session section on the town website for CPA. And if you get a chance, Holyoke um, CPA, I think has a really good um, FAQ section. Just, you know, what is CPA and how does CPA get funded? And, and if I wanna apply, how do I do it? And, and what are some of the um, restrictions and, you know, just, to make it easier for people. I don't want it to seem like this strange thing and, and you know, what what can be done and, and, you know, how does it get voted on? And, you know, just some basic questions like that. So, and, you know, Ray and um, Risa, you know, being newer to the CPA, you know, you may have, you may have good, good questions to ask, you know, because it's like, what, what is this? Yeah. Ray was like, what am I getting into? You know? <laughs> <laughs> too, too late, Ray. No, I know. I'm just, no, I'm just taking it all in right now. <laughs> well, it, oh. since we don't have a lot of business, uh, it's a great opportunity for us to discuss the process, um, the things you like, the things you have ideas could, uh, to be improved, um, the reputation you've heard of the committee in the town, 
uh, all those kinds of things we get to sort of discuss how we work. So I think that's valuable. And then one other thing thinking about next meeting I wanted to run by, I've mentioned it before, is that one of the things in the state bylaw and is the town bylaw is that we'll have a public hearing to talk about the needs and resources of the CPA. It doesn't say to discuss applications, which is what a lot of towns do their public meeting for, but it says to do the resources and um, and needs a, and helping people understand the CPA. And we haven't, I don't think, done that, done that officially. You have to post it twice in the Gazette, which is expensive and will come out of our CPA fund. Um, and it has to be two weeks, the two weeks before the meeting. So because we're now, uh, we have enough time before September 18th to do that. And, you know, it'd be like posted at seven o'clock and then, you know, see if anyone is there with some comments and, um, and certainly, you know, we keep it to, as, as the handbook said that um, Jennifer just sent around, you know, two to three minutes a person and it wouldn't, you know, um, but what do you guys think? It, it just feels like that's one piece we haven't been haven't been doing and what do you think about giving it a try? Is that not um, I didn't hear you, Mark. Um, your question is about advertising? Other than no, my question is doing it. Oh. Are you guys in favor of having starting the meeting next um, our next meeting with an official public hearing section, like, you know, hopefully 10 I, minutes, 15 I, minutes. I, I think it's a good way to do it. The other way is to have a meeting just for that. Right. Which would be our third meeting of the year. So let's just do it next time we meet and get it over with. My worry about having a separate meeting is we'd all show up and no one else would. You know? <laughs> Um, right. I, I, yeah, when we've when we've had the public meeting in the past, I don't recall anyone ever ever coming. Okay. But maybe Edwin will come. Well, if we have it at seven and you know a start of our meeting and no one's there, then we start our meeting. I mean, it's you know, it's it's um, and it is in the rules that we're supposed to do it. So it is, it is, and I see it in for various towns all the time for their CPA meetings and the legal ads. Um, I, Our experience at, on the planning board, the uh, advertisements with the Hampshire Gazette are running three to four hundred dollars. It, it is amazing. It's yeah, it's it's. I think it's, and we have to do it twice. We have to, which I think you know is a lot. It, um, is that a is that a town bylaw or is that a state thing? Both. It's both. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So it, the the by, the town bylaw under the CPA, the CP the Community Preservation Committee is supposed to have a public information hearing. The hearing needs to be posted twice in each of the two weeks before the meeting. Um, and but does it, it have to be in the Gazette? Yeah, it says that. Um, the Community Preservation Committee shall study the needs, possibilities, and resources of the town regarding community preservation. The committee shall consult with existing municipal boards, including the appointing bodies, in conducting such studies. As part of its study, the committee shall hold one or more public informational hearings on the needs, possibilities, and resources of the town regarding community preservation possibilities and resources notice of which shall be posted publicly and published for each of two weeks preceding a hearing in the newspaper of general circulation in the town. So I was gonna put in there, um, you know, hearing is to allow the public to discuss the needs, possibilities and resources of the town regarding community preservation possibilities and resources, because that's what the bylaws says. Um, just, just get the cheapest ad you can. Yeah. Um, and one thing, I, well, yeah, they aren't. Um, one thing I can do during that session is basically the treasurer's report, which we'd be doing in the meeting anyways, you know, explaining the, the breakdown between the different, because by then hopefully we'll have another month's worth. Um, do we need a vote to approve the expenditure on the ads? I don't, I don't 
I don't know. I don't. Do you think we do? I mean, we have the expense budget. I wouldn't think so. Okay. Um, so if anyone objects, go ahead, Mark. So um, I'm just trying to digest this. So the public hearing, the purpose of it would be to let the public express their opinions on the CPA in general. It's not on current applications. That's what the bylaw or, or says. Both. The bylaw says for how it'll be used and what the needs and possibilities are. That's what the, and the resources, that's what the bylaw says. I've noticed almost every town posts to discuss the current application, um, which isn't what the, which isn't what our bylaw says. So I, I was going with what the bylaw said, but um, yeah, it makes sense to have them be able to discuss the current applications because you know that, that's important, um, but that could be part of it, you know. That's, um, so I mean, that, go ahead. I was going to say some years when we like uh, like the spring, we had a lot of applications. There's a lot more. Uh, it's certainly more relevant, and there are things happening, and people are more interested in that. Uh, when we go through our budget and applications and future expenditures, um, you know, it's very, very viable, but maybe considered dry by some to, uh, you know, uh, participate in because we're, we're held to a certain standard. So, I mean, it, it's certainly something to put out there, but I wouldn't put the entire meeting review all the process in case we don't get a lot of participation. No, I'm, I'm thinking like 10, 15 minutes, you know, I, I'm not sure, um, yeah maybe 10 minutes and then people have comments or, yeah, I agree. It's, and and our meetings are, people can watch them after too, um, but we certainly always welcome comments. For, um, so the next question is, we've been having our meetings by Zoom um, for the last, since COVID started and, and we can officially, the state has extended it through to, to into, 2025 for Zoom meetings. So they're certainly still allowed. Um, and, you know, the choices are 100% Zoom, 100% in person, or hybrid. Um, I've been to a few hybrid meetings that were just confusing. I, you know, I'm, if, if somebody really wanted hybrid, I'd be like, somebody else needs to be in charge of that part of it. Cause I, I just, I, it was, it, I remember one meeting we we drove to the meeting we were going to do it hybrid and it was just so confusing we we ended up driving into the the town just to um, make it easier but what it I mean are is everyone okay with continuing Zoom or would some prefer I I, I want to know what you guys think because we can certainly do it any of those ways Mark I like Zoom because I think you get more participation you know people mm -hmm. that are willing to to log in and they can, you know, turn off their camera and turn it back on. They can, you know, it, they can multitask. I think we get more, I mean, this is our experience with, with the planning board is we get far more attendance um, online. I agree with Mark. <laughs> I, like it for I participate in all, all three forms uh, currently right now. And, uh, you know, this one is very applicable for what we're, we're looking at, we're sharing spreadsheets and uh, sharing um, documentation about applications, pictures and the like. It's all very easy to dis distribute that through Zoom, much harder than walking around or handing out papers. I think for this this particular committee, this, this seems to All right, the, our, the, our meeting today is a good example. Denise is on vacation right. and the applicant was in Florida. Yeah. You know, neither of whom could have participated if we had been in person. Right. From my point of view, it's a lot easier to just show the slide than try to say, we're now on page such and such. People, before this, we the applicant had to make nine copies of everything, come to the meeting, and we all had volumes in front of us to hunt through while we were talking. and. And I think this does streamline it. Um, 
So I, 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 and I also like Zoom for February meetings because it can be some bad driving. And even though none of us might be driving far, it's nice not to have to do that. I do miss seeing everybody. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was, some of us were on at 6.30, so there's chatter beforehand if, uh, <laughs> if you still want that. All right, anything else? Um, except somebody can make a motion to, um, so September 18th at seven o'clock by Zoom is our next meeting. And um, oh, so just, just before we, uh, uh, we end, so it sounded to me like the consensus was to stay on Zoom for as long as it's permitted. Is that like, are people nodding yes? Yes. Well, I think we need to be, you know, we can stay on Zoom, but at the very least it'll be hybrid going forward, you know, for all the uh, things that people have supported remote access uh, to the meetings. Well, the next meeting, 100% Zoom, is that fine with everyone? For September. Yeah, yeah, September 18th. And next meeting we'll vote on, well, we'll discuss, we don't have to vote on when our next meeting is like in February, so. Good, all right, um, somebody wanna make a, Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye.